All right, yep, I couldn't hear her. Welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Wednesday, October 31st, 2012. I'm Kristen Folletti. Rackspace is expanding its cloud capabilities via SDN, and EMC has gained a silver tail. Joining us now with his breaking analysis on these stories is senior Wikibon analyst Stu Miniman. Welcome, Stu. Hey, Kristen. Thanks for having me. Rackspace says it's now offering customers the ability to create customized virtual networks in a public cloud using software-defined networking-like capabilities. They've named their offering Cloud Networks. Stu, what can you tell us about Cloud Networks? Can you give us an example of how it works? Sure, Kristen. So uh, we, we know Rackspace calls themselves the open cloud company, and they're, they're one of the real leaders in the OpenStack initiative. They've got uh, kind of all the wood behind the arrow on OpenStack. And OpenStack has had a networking initiative called Quantum uh, for the last, I believe it's year or so. Uh, and the new piece that they've announced today is what they call cloud networks. And what's really interesting about it is if you look under the covers, they're actually using uh, some of the pieces of uh, NYSERA technology. So they've got the open B switch, which is just a uh, open, uh, you know, virtual software vSwitch, which can be put in a lot of the open hypervisors or for VMware uh, in an appliance. And also they're using the NYSERA uh, management platform. So uh, if you look, this is, of course, NYSERA was acquired by VMware for over a billion dollars. Um, and the, what, what this technology allows us to do is customers um, don't just have a cloud network, but they can actually isolate the pieces of their network. So if you compare, um, you know, usually just using VLANs before uh, in the environment, I could have my environment isolated from other customers, but um, with using uh, really the software defined network uh, pieces of the OpenV switch, I can actually isolate all of the applications in my environment so I can make sure, you know, my web traffic and, uh, you know, some of my other applications uh, inside my own private uh, cloud network can be isolated. Now, what are the advantages of using cloud networks? Yeah, so, so uh, the cloud networks, what that's going to allow is uh, greater scalability and greater security. So as I, as I mentioned before, you know, VLANs are technology that customers in the enterprise have been using for a long time and service providers have been using it, but I run out of, uh, you know, how many VLANs I can actually have in a space and that, that's going to limit, especially at the service provider level, um, you know, how, how, many, how much granularity I have to be able to isolate environments and, and give me the security, uh, really that multi-tenancy that customers are looking for. Rackspace previously let customers segment systems using VLANs. Why are they moving away from that kind of architecture? Okay, so, so as, as I mentioned, uh, if you look at uh, what VLANs could do, uh, they, were, they were fine for, for most of the enterprises, but it's, it's really to be able to get to a much larger environment, more applications, and if I really want to have more of my data center in the cloud, uh, whether it be hosted by Rackspace or um, really, uh, you know, just managed as a service, you know, this is the way to go. If you look at the offering today, um, this is only for new environments that Rackspace is setting up. So if I have already have my environment hosted up, I can't migrate to this yet. So um, we're still in early days of some of these deployments, especially uh, in the cloud. So, you know, customers need to make sure that they understand it, um, you know, plan ahead of time. And, and th this will slowly roll out to a broader set of the environments uh, probably over the next year or so. In addition to the SDN capabilities announcement, Rackspace rolled out various other new features in the past few weeks. Can you talk about some of those for us? Yeah, sure. So there were two big announcements. One, actually, uh, you know, SiliconANGLE and Wikibon were at the Strata plus Hadoop show last week, and there was an announcement of Rackspace with Hortonworks. So we're starting to see that intersection of cloud and big data. Uh, I talked to Amazon, and they really talked about how uh, if you look at what we need for big data, we need to have a lot of information, we need to have compute power, but we don't necessarily have to have it at once. So uh, Rackspace is trying to make sure that they're matching what Amazon does. Amazon has a pairing of their S3 and AWS environments uh, to be able to take my stored information, then be able to do the processing and then get it back to the stored 
uh, stored repository in Rackspace is moving in that direction, um, first with a partnership with uh, Hortonworks, and then they're eventually going to have services that they're going to offer for processing big data. The other one is uh, competition to uh, elastic block storage from Amazon. Uh, and that's Rackspace's, uh, you know, block solution. I believe it's the Cinder project that they have on that. Um, applications like databases are still typically going to use block environments rather than file, which is uh, file and object is what most customers are using today in, in the cloud. According to statements by Rackspace on their blog and elsewhere, they're leveraging technology from Nasira to make this product offering possible. We've covered all the news around Nasira pretty closely at SiliconANGLE and on the Cube. Remind our viewers a bit about what makes Nasira worth the $1.2 billion price tag VMware paid for them. Yeah, so so uh, great question, question, Kristen. If we look at networking, uh, there there's really this wave saying that, that software is where the value is going to be. And it, it's uh, all the things that we were talking about earlier, scalability and security and how we roll these, uh, uh, really transform the way networking is done. And NYSERA has a lot of the talent uh, that have helped create things like OpenFlow and the OpenV switch that we talked about earlier. And, uh, you know, it, with Rackspace leveraging some of the NYSERA technology, it's a real proof point that this is good technology that's going to help enable the cloud and enable uh, really uh, not only uh, service provider clouds, but enterprise cloud environments. So really justifying some of that, um, you know, billion dollars that VMware put into the NYSERA acquisition. EMC announced today that they've agreed to acquire Silvertail Systems, a software company in real-time web analytics space. Where does Silvertail fit into the overall EMC portfolio? Yeah, so, uh, you know, when we talk a lot about the EMC acquisitions, you know, VMware gets a lot of the attention, but uh, the $2 billion acquisition of RSA many years ago uh, really made EMC a big player in the security space. And th there's a connection between EMC, VMware, and RSA. If you look at kind of that whole portfolio, th they share their technologies where it's needed. So back when vSphere 4 uh, went out, uh, for VMware, they started to offer things like their vShield product for security, and there were also some RSA technologies that went into that. So Silvertail is a security product. It's really for um, uh, kind of the on the website for banks and really monitoring massive amounts of real-time traffic. It's going to fit right in the RSA acquisition, so uh, right up the road from us in Bedford, Massachusetts. Uh, you expect you know Art Coviello and his folks at RSA to take those technology in, and they're they're pretty excited about that acquisition. Uh, which, uh, from what I'm hearing, is about a three to four hundred million dollar acquisition. Uh, so a nice, nice piece to uh, the security uh, portfolio for EMC. The question we all seem to be asking ourselves with EMC and VMware's focus on software-defined networking is: How does this fit into the overall SDN strategy? Is the Silvertail acquisition an SDN-related purchase, or is this best classified as a tradition security and networking addition to their security portfolio? Yeah, so, so I do see this more on, on the kind of traditional security side, but if you look at SDN as a whole, um, you know, app, uh, security is going to plug in as an application uh, for a lot of uh, SDN environments. So uh, things like firewalls and things like uh, other pieces of the uh, RSA portfolio are going to get through the network uh, as a software appliance, and that's where kind of there's the tie-in to the whole SDN messaging. Um, I don't really see uh, Silvertail as, you know, directly tied into, um, you know, SDN, but it does play into the overall picture of where uh, the network and the security are tying into things, which ties back to the cloud, um, because some of the biggest uh, challenges for cloud computing in general have been, you know, networking, how do we scale it, how do we have enough man bandwidth, how do we isolate it, and then, of course, the security. So it all does kind of wrap together into a nice uh, bundle for, for EMC and its, uh, uh, it, it's, its large uh, subsidiaries of RSA and VMware. Well, Stu, thanks so much for joining us today. We appreciate you uh, joining our program and hopefully we'll talk with you again soon. Excellent. Thanks so much. For all the latest in-depth coverage and breaking analysis on tech innovation, keep up to date with Newsdesk on SiliconANGLE TV.